All right, what's up, everybody? This is Joe Adams, and welcome to the Relentless Pursuit podcast. I do not know which episode this is, but we'll post it whenever it comes out. Today, we have a very special guest for you. Before that, we have my boy Logan Hyder over here with Cinema 83 LLC. Check him out for all your videography needs, recording, production, all the stuff. And he is my excellent co-host now. I, I love it. Yeah, man. It feels good to say that. But it really warms my heart. Oh, I'm stuck. It really just makes me feel <laughs> all good inside. Dude, know? I couldn't do all it without good you. Stuff. I couldn't do it without you. Well, to be fair, I couldn't do it without you either because it's your show. So Yeah, <laughs> good point. So we really help each other. But let's give it up for Mrs. Chance Cole. Hello. Hello, hello. Chance. It's a nice golf clap. Yes. We practice it. Yeah, yeah. We've been working on it. We go in the back of the studio gym and we say, okay, <laughs> here we can go. Our guest is, and then we just stand there and just try to get it really nice and smooth. Nice synchricity? Is that a word? Chrisity? Synchricity? Oh, Syn- the synchris- synchronized. Syn- synchronized. Syn- synchronized. 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 Yeah. yeah. What are we talking Look, about? Look, earlier I made a TikTok with my Sublime shirt, and I sang a 311 song. You sang a 311 song? <laughs> yes. I was like, Sublime. Is that the wrong band? Amber is the color of our energy. <laughs> That's not the right band. Oh, I was going to say, my, I don't know the references yeah, here. I okay. Know. Oh, you don't know that? Joe gets it. Joe gets it. Yeah, I know some 311. I used to get down to that back in the day when it was a lot more chill before the metal came and darkened my soul. Yeah. (laughs) I know. He was like, what music do you want to listen to? And I was like, anything. And he said, I listen to this. I'm like, not that. Yeah, I was like, so no, I'm the same. in black metal? I don't even know. (laughs) I'm the same way. I'm like, yeah, I could pretty much do anything. You know, I don't love country anymore. You know, I I could could pretty much do anything. And then you play that. I'm like, except Mm. for that one, though. You could turn the, you can go ahead and hit the, hit the uh, mute on that. You know what? I'll, this is it's just too much, bro. It's honestly, just too much. I don't want to hear this shit or this early in the morning. <laughs> you know, these They're are late. attacks. These are attacks. <laughs> and uh, make a Joe feel uncomfortable. I, I think I have like sensory processing disorder, though. Like I can't even do jazz. Like that's too many sounds. Well, you were it's, just telling me. I, like I just turned they, off camera. I said oh, to turn yeah. the, the your headphones down and for you, sure. And then you said, "What did you say? Uh, something else bothers you? What you said? The movie the, theater. The movie theater. Yeah." Well, it's loud in that jump. I have to. Makes sense. And like black metal is pretty chaotic. You know, I yeah. remember someone telling me chaotic, one time yeah. though. Yeah. So I'll, is jazz. That's why it's the. Doom, 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 doom. That's a, <laughs> There's like, all it's the things. It's, it's so too chaotic. Many. Yeah, yes. that makes sense. That makes sense. See, I yeah. love the complexity, but I will say, I remember someone telling me one time, they were like, oh, it's just a phase. You're young and angry. I'm like, dude, my dad's 60 and listens to the exact same music Does I he? do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We go to concerts together. It's awesome. That's hilarious. And you just see my dad just chilling, like his shirt's tucked in, some blue yeah. jeans. And <laughs> he's such a like clean Whoa. cut comb over. You know, and then you got me. I've <laughs> heard that you have to be extremely intelligent to appreciate that kind of music. That's and what they say. That's what they say. What, what, what metal? Be- because it's so complex. Do you, I, I haven't heard that uh, jazz musicians, like when they get together, they don't know what they're going to play. They just improv play. Yeah, yeah. And it's chaos. I will say they're all playing their own song together. Yeah, that Mm. is crazy to think about. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, Lil Wayne is one of the like greatest. A lot of people in hip hop, and that's on facts. And they say I knew I liked you. And he uh, he freestyles every song. Did you know that? Yes, Uh, he he doesn't write lyrics. He has never written a lyric. He's he goes into that. He goes into the booth and just records. Isn't that wild to be the greatest ever at what you do and never and never prepare? Basically, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, think about that. I mean, he probably prepares. I guess. Just the practice over the years is preparation, I guess. But I don't know. I say some shit that shocks the, you know, I'm as shocked as you are sometimes. Yeah. It's like, whoa, how does that just flow out of your? How does that just? <laughs> how did that like just that? come out? Like, you know. So Lydia doesn't listen to that like metal at all, but she went to, you know, she likes just tagging along with me to things, yeah, because she just enjoys being a part of things that made me happy. So she went to this show with me earlier this year, um, this summer, and it was a black metal show. Like, her first concert with me is a pretty heavy fucking show. Yeah. And she was like, you know, I really enjoyed it. Like, it's not, she doesn't listen to it on her off time. She's like, those guys are talented and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what I love about it is that they, a lot of these bands, like the main headliner, they've been going for like 30 years, still putting out albums. It just gets better and better. And then they come on tour in the U.S. from, you know, Greece or uh, they're from Greece. Um, and then they play like every night or every other night for like month two months straight like also that that's another thing too they're not this massive band set out all the tournaments they're playing at the exit in and they're so dedicated that's to their I craft to say and i i love that so much because i'm like yeah 
yeah, I'm not going to this concert. There's like $400 a ticket. I paid 25 bucks, but these are just some of my favorite bands yeah. and they are so loyal to their art. And that to me takes yeah. it just to a whole nother level too. They have an authentic following. Like yes. they're fan. You're, Super cult yes. following. And so I love that shit. Like, I don't Small know. but loyal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm listening hey, to Hey, that's it. what we need for the podcast, baby. That's what we talk about, isn't it? Yeah. Small but loyal. And get organic growth. Yeah. I mean, that's how I, I, that's how I, that's built a good a segue. Following That's a good segue. <laughs> on TikTok. There go. hey, there's a softball for you, Joe. <laughs> go ahead. You know, um, Leslie Jordan passed away yesterday. Do y'all know who he is? I oh, yeah. I think I know you're talking about. He was on Will and Grace. He's a comedian. Um, he's oh, like, was he the... Jelly Roll he? posted about it. Which, sh- which one is he? He's an old, He was like 67, short guy, hilarious. He was on Will and Grace, gray hair. I bet I would know him if I saw him. You probably saw him, yeah. Um, anywho, he always... he was very authentic. Like he just got, he was one of the first people I followed on TikTok, but he would get on there and just talk. He just got on there and he'd talk and his mama would be talking in the background and it was just real life. It was very authentic. And that's what I wanted to be. Cause I just wanted to be able to turn it on and be myself. Right. So that's what I did. And I started real (laughs) insecure, but over time I've learned I'm not that different. Like there are lots of people who relate to the chaos that is my head, you know, like I just open the camera, turn the camera on. Yeah. And what, it's like Lil Wayne, they just, you know, this you shit, just go. You just go. <laughs> this shit comes out. I love it. I, I've watched some of your clips. I'm, I I'm just like, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> but people relate. Like, I think there's no one in the world that feels this way. And that is not true. That hasn't been the case. Well, so. we, we've already gone, uh, further away from telling your story I think than we would like but well, we are we are both the exact same way about that like that we're authenticity and like my whole business is built on that yeah his you know this podcast is built on that yeah so. I mean that's one thing I tell like before I even want to bring guests on here I'm like I don't just want so you, just so you know. I don't want people <laughs> to come on that are closed off like I, I yeah. want people that are willing to like kind of like bleed out and yeah. share stories and like be real and yeah, not give a sure. shit what people think if you that's the Care what right other there. people think, then this isn't the right yes. place for you, man. Like, I man, life isn't no the right offense. place if you yeah, care true. what other people think. think that's it's great, really hard. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah. but well, shit, we don't even know. People don't even know. Well, a lot of people but know that who you, you are. Good, that tells you how good the conversation is about to be, though. Well, we're, we're just flying. Oh we're flying around already. Let's go. We were talking about before. She was like, "I'm ADHD," and I'm. I'm like, so am I. Oh, Jesus. And I'm like, well, Logan will keep us. I'm like, wait, Logan's all over the place, too. I was like, we're fucked. <laughs> I said, what are we going to talk about? We don't. It'll, uh, anything and everything. This is like well, a Seinfeld episode. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, <laughs> there's no plot. But same thing, though, like what we were just talking about. You just turn the cameras on. Yeah. I don't like let's having see, a plot. Let's, let's yeah. see what happens. Plot, yeah, I know. Let's see what happens. It's the best. All right. So, Chance, you kind of just talked about how mm-hmm. you are a TikTok influencer, just okay. barely. Um, what else do you do? Like, you know, oh, just, just kind of just tell us what you got going on now, and then we're going to take it back. <laughs> okay. Just just give us a little brief thing so people can know who you are and what you do. Okay. Um, I am 40 years old. I'm a hairstylist. I'm an influencer. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm a wife before I'm a mom. Well said. Okay. <laughs> All for that. I do have kids, though, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're there. <laughs> yeah, they're there. <laughs> I was I was going in things that, that take up time. Kids take up a lot of time. They're assholes, though. You said like wife that. before mom. Uh, well, I'm a wife do, before mom. I do have the kids though? That is yeah. true. That is true. I'm I'm low key addicted to my husband. You know, you you said Lydia did something that you made you happy. Like yeah, that, that makes me happy. I like relationships like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm a wife. I'm a dedicated wife. Uh, well, that comes first. That's what started that the family like, yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Why do you put that on the back burner ever? That's always a priority. Yeah. I'm I'm recovered from addiction. Me and my husband met in a recovery meeting. We're going to get into that. Okay. Uh, Let's see what else. It's all over the place. All over the place. Um, Squirrel syndrome. ADD. I've got some mental health diagnoses we could touch on, you know, but (laughs) I don't know how much much time you have. No, I mean, we got got time. We got time. And you know what? We can always do this again. Yeah. And and I'm an open book. So whatever, that's the thing. I think I... Open my mouth and let the universe speak through me, and that's that's been a, a it's been a solid plan so far. It's worked well. Hey, just like keep that. doing it. I keep like doing that. it. I love that. Open my mouth and let the universe talk. Through yeah, me. <laughs> yeah. Like just exactly. a vessel. <laughs> just a vessel. I try to be a good vessel, you know. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think you're a great vessel. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> as far as I as far as I know, I as far as I can see. I talk a lot of shit see, though, you know. It's so. good though. Good vessels do that. I yeah. Think. Okay. The shit talkers. Shit talkers. Yeah. So sarcasm is a sign of intelligence it, too. Well. So. My husband says I'll make you feel some type of way. 
I, I'm not sure what type of way it is. But he, oh, he says you, you do that. <laughs> I make people yeah, feel some type done, of way. I've done that before too. I, yeah. You have to sometimes. I've learned you have to be careful sometimes. Uh, sometimes you don't want to. You don't want to push buttons. I'm an acquired people. taste. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know, I, I'm a lover. I'm a love them or hate them kind of person yeah. for mm. sure. Luckily, mm. I, not for everyone. I, I would think a lot. I think a lot more people like me than hate me, but the people that don't like me really don't like me. That's so okay. It is okay. It's fun. You gotta have. You gotta have those people. You do. Let the haters be your motivators. Yeah. If and all, everybody and just it likes you and loves you, then they, well, how are wrong. you growing? Well, yeah. and al- well, and also, yes, oh, the growth. I think also, too, though, like if you have principles and things that you believe in, there's you're automatically going to have people that are contrasted to that, right? So, like, just by having something that you truly believe, like the people that don't have enemies are people that don't really believe or stand for anything because they don't. They don't make enemies because they don't stand for the shit that they stand for. Like when you stand for what you stand for, the people that are opposed to that, that's who you end up becoming your enemy. You're right. Mm. So like if you don't have beliefs or anything If, you if stand you're for, firm in those beliefs, I've had some people challenge some beliefs I had yeah. here recently in me have an awakening, you know, like, damn, I didn't realize I've been believing this my whole life. Yeah. You've challenged my belief. And either you, it I need to think you. about it for a little yeah. while before yeah. I continue standing firm, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's just one of those things you got to make a choice. Like, is this something I do? I need to grow on this? Is, is this a good eye opener or do right. I need to stay true to my convictions? Right. Just because, like, my spirituality has been challenged yeah. as of late, you know? And I'm like, but it just. Well, that's what, that's what makes I'm saying. my convictions more firm, you know what right. I'm saying? If, Rather you, than, if you make an enemy out of somebody who's challenging your spirituality, it's like, that's all right. Cool. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like if you're standing up for what you really believe in, it's like, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Be I don't, I, I'd rather have you as an enemy than a friend because I didn't stand up for what I believe in. Yeah. I don't even have to ha- have it, have to have you as an enemy. Like we can have. Yeah. That's probably a negative. Different beliefs. You know, too, you know, you know? I mean, yeah. like let me be me and you be you. And yeah, I just, yeah. Mean, and we're fine here and I don't know what happens beyond here. So yeah, exactly. For me to know and you <laughs> to discover the opposite. I don't know. <laughs> well, all right. God, I'm, this is going to be good. So, because we're all over the place, and I just love that. Let's start from the beginning, Mrs. Chance. However oh far you want to go back. Tell us a little bit about growing up, childhood, you know, life. Oh, gosh, okay. Because um, that's, that's honestly, that's part of who you are now. So, like, go go back as far as you want. Just tell us a little bit about it, and we'll, we'll keep moving forward. Okay. So, um, my mom <clears throat> was a hairstylist, too. I am, I am her. She is me. Where are you from? You from here? You I'm, from, grew up? I'm from a small town in Georgia called Sandersville. Where's that part? Oh Where? gosh, it's not close to anything. Um, you know, people have meth addictions and illegitimate children for fun there. That's what they do. Wow. For fun. It's a small town. Wow. No hate, you know. But my <laughs> my dad, we moved out of there when I was in I was fourteen. We moved to Murfreesboro. That, that was a rude awakening. Oh, so you spent most, most of your life there. Yeah, just a real small town, or like real small upbringing. I was, I was just going to say quickly, Crossville, where my dad lives, it's in East Tennessee. It's a really small town as well. Yeah. Um, and growing up, I don't know what it is now. It's probably still pretty high. It's close to Athens or Tennessee, right? Uh, yeah, like Cookville. It's like yeah, it's real pretty out there, though. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, but anyways, it was, um, I don't know what it is ranked now, but it was ranked. Wait, like, Crossville, is that where they have the Buckies? Mm-hmm. Okay, I went. That's there. so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> they're building one here. Okay. I heard. Exit. Yeah. I heard. Are they really? In yeah, I'm getting brisket. All they're doing time. In Mer- in Mer- their shit's good. I didn't know they were doing one in Mercer. They're yeah. doing a, the biggest one in the world is going to be in Sevierville, which is also in East Tennessee. Oh, but <laughs> anyways, all I was trying to say is that Crossville for the longest time was like the meth capital of. I want to say the country, but that may be wrong, but it was definitely the meth capital of the state. And like, there was a whole ass hotel that had to be torn down because there was a meth lab in it, et cetera. And my point in even saying that is that small town <laughs> thing, but seriously, it's, it's like, it's all real. you have to do is get fucked up. The idle I time mean, is a meth addiction. I'm from a yeah. small town too. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a tough thing. And yeah. yeah. Or pain some, pills. You I know? have some family yeah. in Kentucky, it's real small town. All they do is drink bourbon. Yeah. That's yeah. all they do. What else you got to Ride do? Ride dirt roads. Yeah. Well, what else you, you know? got to do? Yeah. 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 Strip. Kind of crazy. Yeah. So you moved to Murfreesboro at 14. Yeah, so my dad thought he would get us away from all that, you yeah. know. Um, he moved to, he was a songwriter, so he wanted to be close to Nashville. We moved to Murfreesboro. Um, I went to high school at Oakland. Okay. I was not cool, you know, <laughs> at all. But I came from such a small town and then started at that high school. And there were like 4,000 kids. There were like 6,200 people in my hometown. 4, Probably 000. rocked your world. You're like, oh, what God. the hell? I didn't know what the gap was. Do you know the gap? Like, Oh, yeah, the brand. Close, the brand. Okay, yeah. yeah. I thought it was a um, club. Like, <laughs> that's I, it was just culture shock. I thought it was like future farmers. I thought it was like a government against. Oh, you thought it was like a school thing? <laughs> yes. Oh. Everybody wore Gap sweatshirts, and I wanted to fit in that's so funny. bad, you know? Yeah. And I said to somebody, hey, let's join the Gap Club. And they were like, what? <laughs> 
Um, they were like, I don't want to be a part of it. I know, and I was like, I want one of those sweatshirts. And they were like, take your ass to the Gap. It was just humiliating. Take you know? your ass to the Gap. Yeah, take your ass to the Gap. <laughs> just go right over there and grab one. Yeah, <laughs> trying to fit in way back in the day, you know, look like everybody else. Um, my, how the tables have turned. Um, right. That's how it goes. But, but I spent, okay, so that's a, like a huge part of growing up is I spent so much time trying to fit in, you know. I just always felt like an outcast. This as everywhere as do most kids yes in my family i mean you know you just i just felt like everybody had a handbook to live yeah. and i didn't get one. Oh, trust me i get it too i moved yeah. i moved a lot growing up so it was like always the new guy yeah quite a, you know what i'm saying think, so yeah. you want friends you want to fit in you want to i don't know you don't want to yeah. be lonely so yeah i get that that's a really yeah. interesting way to put it i felt like everybody else had a handbook and i didn't yeah yeah low-key Y'all really had cliff notes, and I didn't, you know. It's like you got something figured out that I just, I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but it's something. But you appreciate it when you get older. That's true. Gosh, I didn't I didn't realize until I was probably 38 that it was just like self-acceptance and mm-hmm. self-love, mm-hmm. you know. Like I really had to fall in love yeah. with myself, and now I don't want to fit in anywhere. You, know? you don't even want yeah. to. I don't want to. I don't, you know. Like it feels What's uncomfortable to be like What's the point? Yeah. yeah, it does. Um. I think that's another reason, just to touch back on TikTok, why I like TikTok, because it is authentic. I don't have to, it's it's not aesthetic, you know? It's not Instagram. It's not, Yeah. I don't have to put my makeup on before I turn the camera on. See, I had such a misconception of TikTok before, you know, because I follow like these cringe pages on okay, Instagram. Yeah. And it's just pretty funny because people do some weird shit on TikTok. Oh, now. for sure. But oh, for all, sure. all the weird shit goes to these pages. And I'm like, so in my <laughs> head, I'm like, this is all TikTok is. It's just like really ridiculous shit. Yeah, people think it's just dancing videos. Yeah, and I'm like, why the hell would I spend my time on yeah. that? But then I downloaded one because I was like, well, there's a plat- another platform to get the brand out there. Yeah. And then, of course, I didn't like filter out what my interests are. So I still get a lot of the shit I don't like. Yeah. And I didn't know that. So, cause I tried to get on there the other day and I was looking, I was like, oh, it's like a horror thing. See, that just like, goes to happening? show that you don't scroll on TikTok very often because if you did scroll or if you don't engage with stuff. So if you like stuff, then it'll it show you more of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. The <laughs> algorithm does not miss. Like that's. Yeah. TikTok is interesting. Whenever a couple of years ago when I was still at the end of whenever I had my brand still, that was one of my last things that I kind of tried to, I was like, oh, I'm going to on it tiktok because like all of it was crunchy shit and i was thinking why well, if i just post clips of my fitness videos and stuff like that's just i just don't see people taking it seriously like that but they do oh yeah i'm well, on they fitness didn't TikTok. Then. i mean not they my didn't. stuff but i my feed my for you page has yeah. a lot of fitness they, they didn't then it was it was still that wasn't but that was in like 20 the beginning of 2020 yeah. like it, it was just becoming popular and people were only doing trendy stuff in the dances and it was mostly like teenagers it really yeah. was like every platform ages up Right, so like True. Facebook, yeah. Facebook was really young at first. Now it's really old because it's the oldest platform. Yeah, yeah. Snapchat went from like kid friendly to like, yeah. You know, you're probably having an affair on there. I've never, like, ha- I I never had a Snapchat. That's why I don't even have Snapchat. I, that's why I don't have a Snapchat. That. That's why I don't have a Snapchat. As well. It'll get your ass in trouble. hundred percent. My husband says it's not for married people. It's, it's not. not. It's not even for people in relationships. No. Yeah. Like, like, what need do you have for a disappearing message to the opposite? <laughs> well, they exactly. have that other thing called Marco Polo. I did download Marco oh, yeah, Polo, that but that's like, yeah, it's like video messages that doesn't take up camera space. Mm. You know, mm. you can just like send yeah, t- a 60-second t- uh, video Snapchat or something. Snapchat was pretty much made for sexy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it pretty much was. But like, you can just take a screenshot, so like it defeats the purpose, right? But you right? see it's it, just, but it notifies you take a screenshot, the person. It notifies the other person. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know. So screen. that's pretty much the whole purpose of why it was, you know, of course the business comes out like, oh, this is great for this, that, and the other, and all the people that are using it are like, you know what we're doing with you this. You know what we're doing. <laughs> it's like, come on. Well, okay, so we're going to get into the TikTok. <laughs> all right, <laughs> but um, so you moved here, you're 14, da-da-da, you felt like everybody else had a handbook. Um, moving past that, high school. Oh, you gosh, know. moving past that. Uh, went to hair school, started working as a hairstylist, made a lot of money, put it all up my nose. Ah. Uh, oh, gosh. Um. I spent several years. So you started doing hairstyling like right after high school pretty right much? Right after. Was that okay, so you've been doing mom? it for a long time. Is that yeah. because your mom? Yeah. I didn't want to go to college yet, but, you know, I had to do something. I moved out of my parents' house when I was 17, and, you know, I just was so ready to grow up. Um, th- turns out I couldn't handle the responsibility. I made a lot of money, too, so yeah. I had, in you know, lots of funds to have. Lots of fun. There's a lot of money in hair. Well, there's a lot of money in drugs, too. Yeah, true. So, uh, anywho, I, you know. You want to tell us about that? Um, I mean, I can. It's kind of Please. boring. I don't remember a lot about it. 
Well, yeah. you said you were, how many years were you like doing drugs? And like, did you, did you sell, do I started, them, what? I started drinking and smoking weed and, and doing, uh, like ecstasy, stuff like that, you know? Mm. I guess those were my three things to do when I was young, like 18, 19, 20. Yeah. Um, and then by the time I was 21, I had had a fake ID for three years. I drank too much. I drank all the time. I drank at work. People would say, you smell like alcohol. You know, I had a drinking problem. Yeah. So I quit drinking to show everybody that I didn't have a drinking problem, um, but I just started, started snorting pills. Mm. But then nobody was worried about me because I wasn't drinking anymore, you know? Did was, they know you were on pills? No, of course not. You don't want them to know. It's I mean, kind of easy to play off. It, it was. I mean, yeah. it was, you know, you don't smell like it. And other than, you know, nodding off occasionally. Yeah. You can just chalk that up to a late night. And, and I worked with, you know, people who didn't do those things. So no one knew what to look for. I mean, I worked with hairstylists who partied, but they all cleaned up and went back to work on Monday, you know? like Of course. Just casual recreation. But this was like a daily. Oh gosh. I mean, it was my life. Daily practice. You know? And that yeah. was me. I mean, when I was, you know, you said it was like an eight year stint of this, correct? Like time frame. Probably. Oh, God, I'd say for the last eight years of it, I didn't get, I didn't get clean. I didn't get off drugs. I, I went to jail eventually, but, um, I was 35. Yeah. No, 32. Cause I just had eight years. I just celebrated eight years. I'm Cali sober though. I use cannabis products. You know that's what they say. I don't drink What's alcohol it or What's I don't. I don't drink Cali's, alcohol or use Cali's illicit sober. drugs. Cali's Cali's sober. Sober. I, I like use that. cannabis products. I like that. I like yeah. That. yeah, I mean, I'm but, trying to but, but who that. doesn't? I'm trying to slow down on drinking right now. I'm a little Cali sober as well. <laughs> so I feel you. It's the way. I think alcohol. I mean, I, it's it's poison. I never really had. I mean, I did have a drinking problem, but in the end, it was just like a, a self love problem. You yeah. know, like self love. Just hated myself. One thing I've one thing I've said before is self hate. So but hate. it's good. Self self hate is self love. I remember when I had my went through my little addiction phase. You know, it was just like in the mirror, I saw this person that I that was addicted to pills. I was just a piece of shit, just fucking running their life into the ground, and had all the opportunity in the world to do so much good shit. Like yeah. it was all taken care of, and it was just like this self hatred I had for myself was actually ended up being like the biggest form of self love I've ever had because I hated the person in the mirror. But then I love the person that's come from that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You, 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 I love myself enough to like just hate them, hate that yeah. person so much to walk away from that person because that wasn't me. Because yeah. that makes did, sense. Because that's what you did after that. Like that moment. Because we talked about that on an episode when it was just us, and I want I went back to it because I wanted to make the distinction. I was like, people that were really in that moment looking in the mirror that really did truly hate themselves. That's where people take their lives and things like that. You, that didn't happen to me you, until I was sober, though. What? I had been sober for five years before I had the realization that I hated myself. Mm. Uh, that's when I... Well, and I, that's why I wanted to come back to whenever he was saying that that day, and I was like, the distinction for me on the outside looking at it is that there was love there because in that moment of self-hate, you still chose, like, I'm going to do something better, and that's love. That's not hate. Yeah. yeah. You ch you turning around your life in that moment was love, not... No, it did come out of that though. There was still a glimpse right. of there was something there. Yeah, there was something there. Yeah, yeah, and that's I, important. I was five years, no drugs, no alcohol. You know, sober, just doing it, doing everything they told me to do. You know, and you still felt a certain kind of way. And I was fucking miserable. I was so, miserable. Do you think the sobriety is what you needed to see? What you saw? Uh, I needed to be real miserable before I. And and I had gotten better. Like the 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 need for drugs and alcohol had been removed. You know, I didn't like crave. I wasn't. It wasn't that I needed a drink. I just was not happy. I hated who I was. And I and it, and it it's not that I hated who I was. I just didn't love who I was. Were you by yourself at the time? Or? No, I had my husband. I had okay. kids. But this was just two years uh, ago. Damn. Yeah. So, so I just I don't know. That's pretty intense. I was not too long ago. It so wasn't. two years ago, that was during the pandemic. Oh gosh, just two years ago, yeah. I had to find a way to, like I, I had an identity crisis. I knew that I was an employee and I knew I was a wife and I knew I was a mom and I knew I was, a, you know, I was in sobriety and I knew I was all these things, but I didn't know like who you were, who I Did was. Did they feel like, la uh, they just felt like labels? Yeah, like if almost. you, if you, if you took that away, who, who was I? I didn't know what my favorite color was or who's what my favorite movie was. Like it was just all influence. Everyone had influenced those things. All those. Yes. And if you take away the influences, 
I didn't fucking know, <laughs> you know? What's scary is, though, that's, like, the majority of people. It was, they, like, a, an awakening. Like, I wish yeah. that I could. So what was it? What was, was there a moment? Um, I think there was, like, a, I mean, my husband probably, he, he probably thinks it's mania. You know, there's probably, like, four months where I did everything different. I quit my job. I got a trainer. Uh, I mean, I did everything but have an affair, you totally know, and buy a sports up. car. Yeah, but it was, I mean, <laughs> from the outside looking in, it was probably it was a wild like, ride. Got in therapy, like. I mean, there were days where I would lay in bed for, I mean, just put my kids to school, come back home, lay in bed, just a dark, you know, I'd be super happy and motivated. And then the next day couldn't do anything. Just, I couldn't be satisfied being me. Well, they, we talk, just me. They talk about this all the time. I mean, you can read about it over and over again, but you got these multimillionaires, you know, these people that have all the money and fucking fame in the world. They have all the things. They had the I material had the things. things. Everybody's, they got these things, but they're mean? fucking miserable because it, same thing. They don't yeah. have this, but mm -hmm. yet still so many people want that. And I'm like, man. And it was the checklist for you too. It wasn't just the material things. You had the husband, you had the kids. I had all had the, the things. Yeah. I had the yeah. religion. Yeah. yeah. I thought I had the I spirituality. That, I think that's even tougher than like looking around saying like, I have all the material things. You look around and you think, well, I have material things. Yes. But I've also like the things that people tell me fill my soul. Like the things that should be the best. The things. fulfilling things. Yeah. Those, I got I, all those. I got those things too. And I still yeah. don't feel fulfilled. Yeah. That's, yes. I hear you. Yeah. Because those, that's. That's bigger than material. Like, right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yes. Like, people get the cars and the houses and all that and shit, but you had you had your own blood. And, and you became sober. You know? Like, you were like, oh, yeah. it's, so it's the drugs and the alcohol, so I'll, do, I'll go sober. Yeah. And you're still feeling that. It's got to be yeah. really frustrating. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Um, well, so going back a little bit. So we, you we were, actually are right at 30. Right at 30? Yeah. All right. Um, so we'll take a quick break. What's up, everybody? We're back. This is a quick ad read, and we're going to have Mrs. Chance Culp tell you where to find her, what she does real quick. So oh gosh. Just let everybody know, you know, where to what your TikTok is, Instagram, what you do and where to check you out. Yeah. Okay, so I'm on TikTok and I'm on uh Instagram and it's at All Styles Chance Culp. A L L S T Y L E S Chance Culp. C U L P. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All Styles. All Styles Chance Culp. That was the name of my mama's salon. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. She's dead. That's why I named it my salon now. That's not Tragic. I need nice. to work on the delivery. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> she's like, dead. She said, she I, I need to work on the delivery. It's her memorial. No, that's beautiful. No, yeah, it's beautiful. Okay. It is beautiful. I, I, just, I, I didn't see. I didn't know it was a little bit curveball. You know, a while ago, like, you, you said, is there anything you can't talk about? I was going to say your mama. <sighs> but then I didn't want you to hit Hit you back with it? Yeah, because... I mean, then, uh, then you would have hit your own up bad yeah. spot. See, mm, nice. you didn't have to worry because I'm not a your mama guy. Oh, gosh, okay. But... And no, I always... Not you know what? I've humor. always gotten offended about my mom. My 15-year-old my gets offended, too. He yeah. says that's not cool. Boy, but I tell boys my Boys in particular, like, hey, don't... Yeah. That's moms and wives, bro. Some chill. people don't care, but, like, I, I don't know. I love my mom. She's a saint. I tell my kids, if somebody's picking on you, your mama is an appropriate comeback. It 100% is an appropriate... 100% of the time. If you want to get yes. them riled up, that's for sure. Yes. Your mama. Uh, is that Your the mama. ad read? Are we done? Are you going you to say Oh, that? yeah. And also, <laughs> as always, this is brought to you by Relentless Pursuit. Relentless Pursuit. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Relentless Pursuit. You have a lot of trouble saying your own brand. Name. Yeah, I know. Look, at, uh, look us up on Instagram at Relentless underscore Pursuit. Uh, Relentless Pursuit underscore HQ. Also to follow the headquarters stuff. And I believe it's Relentless Pursuit underscore on TikTok. TikTok. Yes. This episode is also brought to you by Whitney Weiser Savage. Um, she's a good friend of mine. I'm also good friends with her husband. Uh, she's amazing. She's doing a lot of killer stuff. Uh, she runs a company called Her Styles, and she's been on this podcast before. Amazing guest. Definitely check that episode out. Um, and what her company does is geared towards all things women empowerment. It's a branch off of the Mind Style events based off lifestyle, brand, and personal development. Um, they incorporate they incorporate mindset elements into all of their events as well because, like their mantra says, change your life by changing your mindset. They emphasize a life in balance, individual growth, and personal development, and how those things align with your personal life. Um, and that's what it's all about is creating that balance in order to help you improve. The initiative of her style is to uplift and connect women worldwide promote, by promoting positivity, self love leadership, and personal development. Her Styles also has an event coming up in Belize, January 23rd to 28th, and uh, tickets are limited, so definitely check it out. Uh, the retreat is titled Building Influence in Belize, and Whitney's talked about this a few times. It's at this beautiful resort 
Um, there's all kinds of activities that got going on. So it's a really wonderful time for you to be able to grow personally, professionally, possibly even spiritually, but also take a pretty rad vacation and enjoy paradise. Um, this focuses on the importance of knowing yourself, finding your identity and bringing your brand into alignment with, with your life and who you are. So definitely check that out. I think if, I mean, if I was a woman, I would definitely go do this event in a heartbeat. sounds like an awesome time. And I already know the, the influence that Whitney has over women. And I think it's a really positive thing to look into. You can find this event on, it has a, it's on Instagram at her style, H E R S T Y L E. And you can also check out Whitney's page, IG, at Whitney Weiser Savage. Um, and that way you follow both these things. You'll get to know her a little better, what she's got going on, and a little bit more about the event. So I think it's well worth it. We're going to be promoting this a little bit uh, on some of these episodes. And, yeah, definitely go check it out. Yeah, we're talking about um, drugs, addiction, all that stuff. You know, you were kind of lost. What, what did you go to jail for anyways? You said you had mentioned you I got some drug jail. charges. Ah. Um, and I, I mean, I always. Because I feel like she was like right in the middle. Of something. Oh gosh. We'll get that. We'll figure it out. We'll we'll find our way back if it's meant to be. Yeah. Okay. Anybody who mm-hmm. audience I talk is listening. In webs. We fi- we finally we finally started a cohesive thread, and we interrupted with the ad read, and now we're we're back to all over the place. Sorry about that. But it, cool. at least it's entertaining. I feel like it's yeah. entertaining. Yeah. That's how we roll. If not cohesive, but yeah. anyways. So. Um. Spiderweb. What did I say? You went to jail. Drugs. I went to jail. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, I always, I had a, a, a pill. Oh, you were talking about the other hairstylists. You were saying that nobody oh. knew nobody knew you were on pills. and Yeah, they just all had regular normal lives. You know, they were recreational users. And um, and then you were saying that, a co- that's what it was. You were saying a couple of years ago, five years sober is when you realized that all of that was from not loving yourself. And yes, yes, yes. we were talking about how you had all the boxes that were mm-hmm. checked, but yes. you still felt that way. Yeah, that's I had what, all the things. That's where we were at. Um, You're welcome, audience. Thank you. Gosh. <laughs> That's that was like a, a monumental moment in my life, though. Like having all the things, you know. You, what they say, I have arrived. That was the moment that you know I had the job that I I was the boss. They made me the boss. You yeah. know, I was suffering from imposter syndrome because I didn't know shit about what I was doing. I just, you know, faked my way to the top. Fake and it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. You know, but I'm really good at faking it. I work well under pressure and it's just, just all the things that make made me who I was got me to where I was in that moment. Um I was just real miserable. I was unhappy. Yeah. I was doing too much. I wanted I realized I was a kind of parent that I didn't want to be, but I didn't know how to make it different because it was just the same, you know. Yeah. So I made a career change, and um, I got a therapist, and did some soul searching, and we talk a lot about therapy. Did that help you out? Oh God, yeah. Everybody needs a therapist. I That's agree. what we always say. Yeah. Everybody needs a therapist. <clears throat> you know, I always had this mindset like therapists don't know my experiences. They haven't been there. How the fuck are they going to tell me anything yeah. about life? But then I started going to a therapist, and I'm like, man, at the end of the day, they've worked with a lot of people that have been through some similar shit if they haven't experienced it themselves. But at the end of the day, they they and they and have lot, conversations tougher than mine true, true, every day. True. You know what I'm saying? So and a lot of them became therapists because they did go similar through yeah. some exactly. Stuff. Or that, it, that's the case too. You know, like like me going to therapy made me kind of think like they'd be kind of cool to be a therapist. You know, yeah. like yeah. And sit and talk to somebody like that. So I think a lot of people that are in that like they didn't just find themselves as a therapist. Like you know, like people that are nurses, you, you like have nurses, to and have stuff. a genuine desire right. to want to help. Right, like yeah. people so are nurses to hold and that teach, kind of space. Like people. nurses and yeah. teachers, you don't just become a nurse. Yeah. Like you have grew up wanting to help kids or want to, for you sure. know, whatever. So yeah, because it's like you you're gonna hear some hard shit and you gotta like live with that. Yeah, like yeah. on a day to day basis, yeah. you hear some terrible things. I mean, you do hear a lot. Probably, I'm sure they get a lot of people overcoming and they get their progress and they're like, holy shit, this yeah. person's life has changed so much. But I'm sure on an often. Well, that's why Basis. I wouldn't do it. That's why I wouldn't. That's what do I was going to say. I, I have. Couldn't. You have to have a, an insane ability to com- compartmentalize, compartmentalize yeah. that stuff. Yeah, to not. And and that's one thing about my job. People people share some stuff in the hair salon. You know, some that's an intimate space. You're. It's just me and my client in a chair, and the door's closed, and and it's about half the size of this room. And oh, you have your own room. That's cool. Mm-hmm. And and I'm an open book. I share my experience, and yeah. people just will. When you're open Share with people like that, so yeah. much. Yeah. I think that I think that's one of the things about like this environment, you know, that that and that's a good point on it is that like whenever you're transparent like that and you drop your walls down, people just like 
They do. I think people want to talk to somebody too. They do. And so whenever you you're like, hey, I'm open to talk, people it just starts coming out. And it's yeah. pretty cool about here, this podcast. It's like, yeah, we got the cameras, and it's going to be posted all over the place. But honestly, that's kind of what it's like. We got yeah. this energy in here, and just like people are able to come in here and just let their guards down. They don't even yeah. really pay attention to the cameras. It's just us three having a conversation. So they let their walls down for the most part, and. Share some pretty hard stuff. Yeah. But it's cool because it's awesome. so many people are going to listen to that and it's going to be, all these things are going to be relevant to somebody. Oh, for and sure. And they're like, holy shit, like this person's putting that out there and like, I'm dealing with something very similar. Like this is really helping me and look at where they're doing yeah. now. Like it's such a cool thing to see and be a part of as well. well the so. most therapy that I've gotten in the last few months has been sitting right here listening to the people in your chair. So. Everybody has something going, like everybody is going through something, you know? Yeah. Everybody's going through some shit. Yeah. That's why I think TikTok is so popular. It's it's relatable, you know? Yeah. And somehow the algor- algorithm knows what you're going through. Like, it, it'll send you, um, oh, gosh, I don't know. Take that out. No, I'm don't. not going to be able to follow we, up. No, on we don't take anything out. You're okay. It's, um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it is brilliant the way that it it's works. It's brilliant. And, and I actually... I think that it's very similar to how um, – I'm talking way too much. I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Logan, you're great. I think that it's very similar, actually. Like, I've uh, tried to use it as a metaphor for my mind, the algorithm, just generally the algorithm, because I think that, like, your mind is the same way. Like, if you – like, let's say your mind – because your mind does it. It's a thought machine, right? It, it just feeds you thoughts. That's what it does. It's a brain. So, like, it's going to feed you a bunch of shit. But if you pay attention to certain shit, it's going to feed you more of that shit. That's because, exactly what I'm saying. Because because it wants you to it wants to like please you in a way, right? So like if you yes. constantly look, even if it's negative, even if it's bad, you don't, you, you, you got to spend look at more it, time on the FYP engaging so that you can learn okay. cha- yeah. about the algorithm. It changes it's, it. Well, like on my even on my YouTube, like if some it, a couple of videos pop up that are like I watch one politics video and a bunch of politics videos pop up, well, I don't want that. So I'll purposely go watch a bunch of other shit that I'm interested in, and then the next time I open it up, it's gone. Yeah. But your brain, all I was saying is that your mind works like that as well, I believe. And like, if you tell these things can read your mind, if you tell your mind, I swear, I swear, you want these type of thoughts, it'll give you more of those type of thoughts. Yeah. If you pay attention to bad thoughts, it's like, it thinks, oh, well, this is what he wants. So I'm just going to keep giving him that. Yeah, Yeah. true. But that's how, yeah, it's very similar. Even then, yeah, I see what you're saying too, because it's been really cool to see the engagement uh, with some of my posts. You know, I did the one a few days ago. Or last week, or I t- it was like a three-minute clip. I was talking about my wreck, you know, the anniversary of it. And just got a bunch of comments on there. You know, some guy was telling me, oh, man, yeah, I just had a wreck in September. Yeah. You know, got rods and shit. He's still yeah. laid up. He's like, I'm going through it hard, you know, like yeah. mentally. You know, this one, you know, these people want to connect with you on a personal level because they're like, oh, my God, I went through a, a pretty traumatic experience yeah. like that. Or I know somebody is, and, you know, I'm there I for swear. them. And they're just like, holy shit. And it just... It's really cool to engage with those people and be like, hey, I deal with it too, man. And this is how I'm fucking moving forward. And this is what I got going on. But like, it's okay for that shit to weigh on you. Yeah. It's just, you don't let it drag you down. That's, that's my whole thing. It's like Tuesday was really fucking hard. I had a terrible day that day, but I didn't let it drag me down and put me in a hole. I just felt it. And I was like, man. I had to acknowledge it because it's you happened. It's a part of my it. life. You have to. You said I felt it. Yeah. You said I felt it. You didn't say. You said I felt it. That's the most important thing. Like yeah. the feelings are going to be there. Yeah. You just got to feel them. If you just go ahead and lean into them, and feel them, they'll go away. It's like they, they won't have as much energy. You yeah. know, they have energy. You got to give them the power that they deserve, and then they'll go away. Yep. You'll be good. Exactly. Till next year, probably. It's counterintuitive. Yeah. But it's true. Yeah. It's like the difference because, like, well, I don't know. I could try to think of analogies all the time, but. That's also a sign of intelligence, by the way. Leaning into my, your feelings? No, uh, oh. my, my my therapist, actually. Uh, he, he told me that because I'm, I'm always like, you know, this is like this. Like, your mind is like the social media algorithm. Like, I do shit like that all the time. But he said that that's a sign of intelligence because, um, like, metaphors and mm-hmm. similes and that kind of shit. And, it, uh, yeah, metaphors, really. Um, you're basically taking a really complicated idea and you're bringing it down into, like, one sentence. Yeah. So you're like, and this is like, it. It, yeah. So that it takes intelligence to be able oh, to do cool. that. Cool. I do this shit all the time. But I also am the layman. Like sometimes I need you to give me a metaphor so that I can well, understand. Well, that's well, that's the thing too. What you're talking about. Exa- well, that's yeah. the exact point. And I've also heard it put that a genius can make something complicated seem simple. Yeah. Well, My husband speaks <clears throat> in metaphors often. Sometimes I'm confused though when I say, okay, but who am I? Right. Like in the example, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. then I know, and then I can understand. 
I love them. I, yeah, I, me I, too. I, my speaking of my mind works in them. Well, it's, some of these things too, it's, you know, I, I have one quote that I use on the shirts. I didn't make it up, but it's, comfort is a slow death because people are just so willing to get comfortable and die slowly. And it's the same thing with like traumatic experiences. You, like They let it happen and they just like let it eat away at them. Rehabbing and And rehabbing instead of just feeling it all yeah. at once, like, you know, I compare it to getting punched in the face. I don't know. Good example. Like, do I want to get punched in the face? A lot of people are scared of it because it's like, holy shit, that's going to fucking hurt. And I know it. And it's going to, it could cause some damage and it's going to suck. But the thing is about it is like you get hit in the face, you feel it, and then it's over with pretty quickly. Yeah. But then you got some things, situations in life that are much like a tick. <laughs> and it just sits there. And you know the tick's there, but you just slowly just sucks the life out of you and sucks away instead of so much people are much they're 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 much more able to allow a tick just to suck the life of them and cause this long-term damage than just get fucking hit in the face real quick were you, you know? spanked as a child did you get oh, spank- yeah, spanking sure. me too I, did too I was gonna say I I'd, I'd choose the spanking anytime yeah. i'll choose the pain give me the pain I'm, yeah i don't want time i'll out. take it that means i gotta sit there for how long am i grounded team? for what's the other alternative no i'll take yeah. the whooping every like, time i'll get to hang out with my friends this no. is terrible i know i have heard though uh, I, even though i do i do this is a controversial topic that we're on here but so but i, I was spanking. spanking i think it worked out okay but that's neither here nor there. I was appropriately spanked. Uh, correct. I okay. got spanked in school one time with a paddle. Me too, twice. In Texas. Twice. Terrible. Yeah, that never happened to me. But Talking. But the, the time out oh. thing, though. Look I at ha- me now. <laughs> Miss talk. Lawson. Yeah, all we do is talk. <laughs> all we do is talk. <laughs> um, but, no, I've, ju- I've just heard before that, like, the time out thing, if it's explained to a child properly, is actually a pretty good method of punishment because you you teach them the value of time. Mm. So you basically say, like, if you can teach them the importance of their time and then take their time away as punishment, it's actually a pretty pretty effective form. Interesting. It is interesting. I don't know how you would teach a child the value of time, but if you... They have no concept of time. Yeah. That's funny. Um, but, yeah. I've heard, it's an interesting thought. Like, Or if they don't even understand it at the time, as they get older, they, they somewhat understand the value of time because you think, well, that's what was taken from me whenever I did something wrong. So that must be important. Right? Yeah. So. That makes a lot of sense. Uh-huh. My parents always put us in time out as a way to to make us go be with our emotions alone, you know, like. So that's smart. Because emotions are overwhelming and uncomfortable and having a meltdown is. You got to be alone. Makes most people uncomfortable. My mom would be like, go in your room, you know. Well, most adults aren't okay with sitting yeah. by themselves. That's and, one thing and their I thoughts. Do. People are very yeah. uncomfortable with that. So it's they hard need to hold. Stimulation. That's what we were saying. Like a therapist, it's hard to hold space for someone who is having such an emotional attack really you know i let my kids have meltdowns and i sit with them and i don't try to make them feel better but i don't tell them to like dry it up you know yeah because they don't they don't know how like they have to learn you have to learn how to self-soothe no one they just i mean we learned how to self-soothe because we had to go be by ourselves but i don't know how old are your kids five and nine and i have a 15 year old godson ah very nice all over the place, eh? Yeah. All over the damn place. I have a neurodivergent family. We're all a little spicy in the head. A neurodivergent. You know? that's, mm-hmm. that's awesome. When did you meet your husband? Eight years ago. Eight years ago? Yeah, we just... Did he have I, any... So did he had some drug problems as well? Mm-hmm. Or? He nope. had just gotten... We got a little bit away from your story. We can head back to that. <laughs> oh, is that where... No, oh, no, I'm just saying that we got a little off... Oh, Are we back topic. on top? Yeah, let's go oh, back to your not. story. He was he was asking <laughs> about, your, about your husband, so we could pick up from there. We were talking about the thing a couple of years ago, that moment when... Everything kind of changed too, but he was asking about your husband. So you can go kind of back to when you met him in the rehab. Or in the, I don't know if it's rehab. <laughs> y'all met him. It was it was a AA meeting. A- I met oh, cool. Alcoholics Anonymous. So yeah. that's where y'all met. Mm-hmm. I heard nice. she said that earlier. Yeah. Oh fuck. It's okay. <laughs> you weren't listening. I mean, my brain's all over the place. So <laughs> he was, he was I, like, I was listening, but it doesn't mean was, I. <laughs> in the back of his head, he's like, "Rehab, Logan." Shut I literally, I literally was thinking you like when I before we got on here, I had to pay attention. Like I had to tell myself, you have to pay attention. Like I stare at you when you talk, and then it's I am so much dumber than I thought I was. <laughs> what, do <you> mean? <laughs> what do you mean by that? What do you like mean? it's just so hard for me to. Okay, so this happened like when I went through my awakening is what I call it when I like fell in love with myself. I, I pulled like I, I escaped trauma drive. You know when you're in trauma drive, you're just like overachieving, trying to do, I was super mom, super woman, super employee, super wife. I was doing the most all the time, Yeah. but I wasn't doing good, you know, but I was pulling it off because that's what I do. I'm good at 
a lot of stuff. Good at playing the game. I'm good at a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. I can make it look good anyway. Um, so it was just very unfulfilling. Where was I going with that? I need an assistant. I, oh, a brain assistant. That's what no, it is. Said, yeah. I can't keep my thoughts together. I'm, I'm very much the same way. Like, honestly. it was like I had this, like, a couple <laughs> month period where I, I, I was, like, in a depression, which wasn't depressed, but it was just, like, below baseline for me, you know, just yeah. a little slower. I never really recovered from it. And, I, and that's been, like, a year ago. And I'm just, like, slow. My thoughts are sl- My mouth is fast, Okay. But my thoughts are slow. I can't. I, sometimes I can't pay attention. I can't. So you said over the last stay year, on top. You, you, you know feel slower over the last year. Definitely, but it's because I I don't push myself to be so smart. You know but what I'm maybe, saying? Maybe maybe that's maybe it's okay that you're slowing down. But I'm much happier. I was gonna say maybe it's okay yes. you're slowing down. Yes. I think maybe it's good. Maybe you're doing a little more observing, a little less like. You're right about that. In. I'm very much that way too. My girlfriend drives her crazy. I'll like. I mean, obviously, I talk super fast anyway, but <laughs> my mind goes a lot faster than my mouth. You're does. right. There's a whole my, 300 conversations that you can't a, hear a right now. A bunch of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a bunch of them. And like people say, you can't think two things at once, and I'm not sure that's true. Mm-mm. Yes. But uh, it is. I can't write. Fit, like I can't. I would love to keep like a physical journal, but I have to do it typing because I cannot. Like I literally can't keep up. I'll be like halfway down the page. I'm definitely a writer. Yeah, yeah me too. We're, we're on the we're on the paper, pen and paper. I, well, Always. I could do something like that, and I do do stuff like that. Oh. Joseph Adams. Oh, man. You son of a bitch. Oh, but no, like I, uh, I'm, I'm weird. But like I'll get like a really pretty journal. Like my girlfriend gave me a, like a leather bound journal a couple of years ago. It has my name engraved on mm-hmm. it. I've not written anything in it. Cause I can't think of anything that's good enough to write in it. I would love to write a journal in it. That's fine. I have one too. My friend Diana gave me for my birthday. But like my journal, it's nice. My journals, I, I deleted, I accidentally deleted one that I had, uh, I started in the spring of 2020 and it was, it only had like maybe 10 entries in it. It was a hundred pages long. So I can't keep up with my hand. <laughs> my yeah, hand I like having a paper journal. Like, I'll just yeah. bring this journal with me everywhere. I'm, I'm going to eventually release a journal, both a paperback one and an app, because a lot of people prefer the app. Like, something online, I like carrying something around that I can open up and, like, check off. It just you know that feels system, better. The system I do, I told you about? Like, the productivity system I've showed you? Yeah. I want to do the same thing with that. Nice. We can collaborate. But my only point in saying that, again, I went all over the place, but I'll, <laughs> I'll say one thing, and I'll be literally – over there. I forgot that that was the point that got us here. Exactly. Yeah. So, and then I, I, came, I came up with that. I see, got, sometimes I have strokes, too. Did you see what just happened just then? The words was like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> did, did, Either one of y'all, did you pick that up? Yeah. I mean. I do that I a lot. I did it because, like, I do it all the time. I yeah. just so, like what happens. It's like when I said my name at Relentless Pursuit, I'm like, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> it, like I do shit like that all the time. Like he has trouble like, with relentless pursuit for some reason. I don't know. Relentless yeah. pursuit. But I have Literally. trouble saying cinema eighty three too. It sounds weird coming out of my mouth. Yeah. I can't say free refills. You did it. I did. There, there it is, right there. But oh gosh, y'all didn't didn't you didn't oh. get the okay good there the, we go. The last point about <laughs> this is that well, you were talking about leaning into emotions and stuff. Lately, I've gotten to the point where like I'll. Like, I'll be sitting with my girlfriend or something, and we'll be in the middle of a conversation. Usually, it's, like, a troubling thought, because, like we were saying, the algorithm, like, even if it's a negative headline, it's, like, a salacious headline, right? Like, that's why newspapers do it. So, you click on it. So, my mind clicks on it, because it's, like, Mm -hmm. scary, but it's still, like, you know, enough that it engages me, so I click on it. Yeah. And I'll go down this path. We'll be right in the middle of a conversation like this, and and so she'll start talking, and then something will come across my mind, and she's still talking, I'm like... <laughs> My son will say, "Mom, are you zoned out?" And I'll, yeah, and I'll literally <laughs> yes. tell her like, "I've gotten to the point where I'll just tell her like, sorry, I I went somewhere else.'" Like, My therapist says that that's totally healthy. It's dissociation. To, to say that? Yes, it's a, it's a form of self soothing. Oh, yes. see, I zone what, out. What, the, the it's a form of self soothing. Really? What, yes. The activity or or calling it out. Uh, the activity like, dissociation. Oh, D- just you know zoning out. Mm. I call it, you know. Time travel, just escape your body for a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, lately I, I do it all the time. Vacation. I have like a pretty vivid imagination. Like I have really bad nightmares, you know, that are like really vivid. And uh, and so I, you know, I visualize stuff when I like when I hear things. Like if you said something really gross to me right now, like I would see it. Me too. Head, I'm very you know, visual. Like yeah. To the to a, to a fault. Like I yeah. can't not see it. And uh, yeah, I'm a very visual type person. Lately, I've realized I I I damn near daydream. Like I never really realized I was daydreaming, but I'll have visualizations that are so like. I'm so caught in my mind, even though my eyes are open and I'm looking at y'all right now, I'll have such clear visualizations in my head <coughs> that it basically is like a dream that I have to like come out of and like shake off. That's why know? like shit, what, even when I'm driving, I drive so much. I mean, hell, that truck, I put 45,000 miles on it in the past year. Like I'm all, I'm on the road a lot. I yeah. call that time travel too. You just show up somewhere <laughs> yeah. and you're like, how did I get here? Well, like oh, I yeah, pay yeah, attention yeah. to the road, but like I don't play music. Me I don't either. Do anything. I just like kind of 
zone. That's my time, like I'm, yeah. I'm good on the road. I can pay attention, but every my thoughts are just everywhere else. I'm in my head. I don't even listen to music anymore. That's meditation, though. Yeah, I kind of I, I enjoy it. Honestly, some people, yeah. prefer it. Some people think it's creepy. Yeah, yeah that's but meditation. I just like look over. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, he must be jamming out, but no, it's just all your guys. Yeah. I'm do, being you have psycho. A, do you? I don't work out to music. You're fascinating to me because I, you, I feel like you have a similar mind to mine. We do. We both. We all three have a lot. Do you, do you hear songs all the time? Constantly. Do you have earworms constantly? Constantly. Yeah. I, I can't. I, get... I saw a TikTok about that yesterday. Wait, it... earworms. Earworms is whenever you you get a song stuck in your head, basically. But it's yes. an actual mm. it's an actual thing. And by the way, uh, nobody knows why they happen, and nobody knows how to make them stop, and nobody knows any basically anything about them. Like M- the song is usually a TikTok sound. Hand to God. Well, it's usually like... <laughs> it's usually a catchy sound. So anything catchy, like, there's like a certain rhythm that your brain really likes. And if you lit and a lot of music, whether you realize it, is played in that rhythm. Mm-hmm. So you'll hear a song that's like, dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun. and then it's not even the words; it's the dun, 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 dun. but yeah, I get um like one o'clock in the morning, I get up to pee before my feet can hit the ground. I got a concert playing in my head. Like, yes, dude. No, it's terrible. Like, no, it's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible, dude. It's like <laughs> the most maddening experience that you could ever. Do have. you stay overstimulated a lot because that's overstimulating? Yeah. Like that's one thing. I can't shut down. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we don't have TVs in my house downstairs because that's another noise. You know, I have people talking and then the TV and then. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's, we just have our one TV. I won't have one in the room just because honestly, it's bad for your sleep. I've just got so much going on up here. All yeah. The time. Yeah, but that's why the slowdown I think is good, and that's one thing that I'm learning is like, uh, I've always been afraid of like, oh, well, you're gonna like dull yourself by doing that. Like, this is your speed and like what you're doing. That's who you are. It's like, yes, yeah, true, but it's okay like for that to be my nature and also learn to control it, right? Yeah. Because yeah. when it's when it's that's when you're experiencing a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, it's just out of control. Yeah. Like your mind is your greatest tool. It's your greatest ability. It's your greatest gift. But at the same time, if you don't know anything about it or how to control it it'll control it. like thinking grow rich is one of my favorite books that you have to read because i always bring it up to you and you haven't read it but self-awareness he, he says uh um if you don't control your mind you can be sure it will control i will you. talk i will bring that up though too because i just was listening to a thing about thinking grow rich and books like that and they're great but the problem that they fall through on books like that is like people just think they can manifest everything but yeah I these there. authors and stuff like that fail to actually also put weight on the work with that, like, yes, you can right. manifest something, but where's all the, what's all the other shit that's going on? Because a lot of people do think they can just like, man, I know it's going to happen. It's going to work out. And then they sit there and they're waiting for it to work out or this to happen. And it doesn't. You have to be fucking proactive. And like, I do think books like that are great, but you got to understand that you still got to work your ass that's off right. to make that happen. I believe in manifestation, but I also believe that you can't manifest something Unless you trust yourself, and you can't trust yourself unless you've learned to hold yourself accountable. It's, and most people don't have general integrity, you know? Yeah. Well, they don't like, even hold themselves accountable, so they don't trust themselves, so they're never going to manifest because they don't genuine, genuinely believe. Exactly. And even like praying. Uh, people mm-hmm. pray, and they're say, like, yeah. so prayer. And a lot of people will be like, I just pray that financially I can be doing well, and I pray for this and that. And they're like, it's, and they just you know, it's in God's like, hands or whoever they believe in, right? It's in their hands. Me, it's like when I go do my prayer and I'm praying to the gods or whatever, I'm just like, show me the steps. Make something clear. I will fucking do the rest, you know? Look, yeah, like, show me the give signs. Me, give me a sign. Give yes. me, like, I want to get here. I'll do the work, but, like, I'm manifesting this with y'all. Like, like and so... They, I don't just like put it in their hands, like because it's life doesn't work like that. It's yeah. just like praying I'll, to win the I'll lottery. Row like, the you're boat. Probably, yeah, you steer the ship. Yeah. You know? What what have I what have I said? Every time we get in these conversations, balance, right? Mm-hmm. To me, that's why that's the to me that's why balance is the top of the hierarchy. Yeah. Everything else falls beneath that, like faith, trust, all this stuff, because you have to have a balance of everything. So balance yeah. to me is like the tippity tip top. So like manifesting, very important. Also important to balance it with action. Yes, right? for sure. And there, even even in the Bible, there's a um, there's a story that because this is a topic I've been thinking about too lately. It's weird how this conversation has flowed like, like that. But uh, there's a story in the Bible, or maybe it's not a story in the Bible. Maybe it's just a story about the Bible. But basically, it's saying that like this guy, I think it is in the Bible. Anyway, <laughs> this, this guy this this guy basically is drowning. In like, I, I'm not one to argue with you. And, I wouldn't know well, you could. Yeah, tell I don't know. I don't know. I just feel bad. Rebecca, but, I wouldn't. But now I feel like somebody's gonna be like, oh, it's just some random. Uh, I'm pretty sure he isn't. I'm not fact checking. This this guy's drowning. Right, the guy's drowning. A boat comes by, and says, um, "You know, do you need help?" And the I've guy heard this. and the guy says, "No, God's going to save me." Yes. And then another boat comes mm. and says, "Yeah, do you need help?" And he says, "No, God's going to save me." And then the third boat comes, etc. He dies. 
And then he gets to heaven and God says, why didn't you get on the boat? And he said, well, I thought you were going to save me. He said, I sent you three boats. Three boats. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that before. Like, you know, so it's like, I sent you the boat, but yeah. well, fuck am I, if you're not going to get on the boat, what, the, hey. what am I going to do? So, well, that comes back to awareness too, yeah. And perspective. Like, yeah. you got to have, you know, which perspective are you looking upon the things that are being handed to you or shown to you or given to you? You're not going to see a big glowing hand come yeah, down exactly. and like, scoop you out of the exactly. water yeah. and, and set you on the shore. We were talking about metaphors. Yeah. I think that's a great metaphor for the balance between, yeah. you know, those two things. And also, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, my girlfriend's stepfather passed away unexpectedly. He had a heart attack, and he was in the hospital for like a week. And it really changed my perspective on um, praying. And I'm not like a super religious person. I, I've gotten a lot more spiritual and stuff, but I'm not. I'm definitely not religious. And that's I'm not a, religious. It's a whole different conversation. But um, I was talking to my mom, you know, because it was a difficult thing. I've never been that close to death like that, you know. And it was, and at the time, he was still alive, but it's like this isn't going to go right. well. Like I don't know how to handle this type thing. And plus, I'm trying to be strong because everybody that was there was basically women. You know, it's my girlfriend, her sisters, her mom. So I'm like trying to. But there was like one moment where I was talking to my mom, and I was like, I did kind of. I was like almost started breaking down. I was like, I did. I don't think I. Could, I can't go back in that room. It's just too. It's too much. Pain. But you felt like you had to be strong. Yeah. And um, so, anyways, the whole my whole point in saying that is that. Um, Around that time, obviously, there was a whole lot of, like, I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to pray that God, this, that, and the other. And it, I don't know why this clicked in my head, but I was like, okay, but, like, the people who pray also believe that there's a plan, right? So are you praying that God goes against his plan, or are you praying that he, that it it, it goes how it's supposed to? <laughs> I don't and know. That, that's some deep shit. I'm a, and I'm a thy will be done. That's my, that's you know my what, prayer. You know what I'm saying? Often. It's like. If it's your will, God, you know. To yeah. me, yeah, exactly. That's my thing, though. People pray as if God's like a pony and he's going to do a trick for you. It's like if <laughs> if he's going to to take it back to that real level, if he's going to save his life, he's going to save his life. Yeah. And you praying for it has no effect on that. And if it did, God wouldn't be God. Yeah. He would just be this thing you could wield around and say, say, I pray uh, this, I pray that. Man plans, God laughs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So a prayer to me is just like active hope. Yeah. Like hope is kind of not active. It's just like, oh, I hope this happens. Prayer to me is almost like an active version of hope where you're like, you're like putting almost action behind hope. It's like a different level of hope. Yeah. But it's definitely not like an order to be fulfilled, which I think is what people look at it as. Yeah, like, of course. Here, it, let me submit this to you. And then, yeah, then they get I mad about it. Of, if yeah, if I had unanswered pra- prayers. You're yeah. right. And they're like, oh my God, thanks yeah. God. Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. didn't even listen to me. Right. And it's like, well, <laughs> fucking hey, you're missing the whole point. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I took but, over that whole segment again. My bad. That's okay. No, dude, you're good. And God, there was something I was going to touch on with that too. And I've totally... Here's the thing, and this is my thing, and we'll get back to the story. <laughs> My mind can literally go, I'll be looking at something, and I'll be on a task. Me and too. I swear to God, if I get distracted. For one second. I'm fucked. Yeah. It was like, it was, so, it was funny. Sorry, we're honey. We're all the same. Sorry, honey. But we were uh, going to Chattanooga, right, for this event Saturday at a bodybuilding show. And usually, we did a day trip. It was me, her, and my sister. We left at 5 a.m. Saturday morning, set up at 7.30. And we were there from like 7.30 to about 10 p.m. And we had like a couple hours in the middle of the day to get lunch and change or whatever. And uh, so, you know, for the night show, we usually dress nice. Like I'll throw on my jeans, some cowboy boots and a blazer, you know, yeah. look sharp. Lydia will wear a nice outfit. My sister brought one. <sighs> but I don't know, just the way my brain works. Like I went to put my <laughs> outfit in the bag and I didn't want to mess up Lydia's outfit. So I put it at, took it out and set it to the side. And I put my shit in there, and then I just took the bag and put you it in the truck. You did not pack her stuff. I didn't pack her stuff. So midday comes, you know, I'm cha- I changed in the truck. I got my, I'm looking good. People are like, looking sharp, Joe. And Lydia goes in the bathroom, and she texts me. She's like, where's my outfit? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'm looking around. I'm at the truck. And, of course, we finally get home, and it's there. But she was not very happy about it, and it wasn't the biggest deal. I made it. Shit happens, though. I took it very seriously because I, like, I do try really you feel hard. feel disappointed in Yeah, yourself. I'm disappointed in myself. And she's like, Joe, you don't. You're yeah. like, if this is the worst case of a, a relationship, we're in a good fucking place. But I still took it to heart. I was like, fuck, you know, because, you know, I care. And, um, but, but still. People make mistakes. But she you wasn't, gotta, she wasn't happy in the moment. Yeah. She was like, you kidding me? Like, I wanted to look cute. And my, yeah. my sister changed back into her morning clothes just to make her feel better. Oh, you know? That's sweet though. <laughs> yeah, it was sweet. But um, anyways, but that's just how my brain works. Like literally one move. All I had to do was put it right back. It was next to the fucking bag. But that's how I am. It's just like super relatable. That's why if I don't have a list and checklists and objectives, like I'll come in here one any day and I'll be like, I got all these things to do, and I'm like, I go partially do this thing and I partially <laughs> yeah. do that thing, and yeah. it's like I'm running circles, and I'm like, 
holy shit, I'm losing my fucking mind. 85% of stuff gets done, right? Yeah, and then I go yeah. to my checklist, and I'm like, all right, get my laptop. I'm like, okay, let's do this thing. Send these emails. Boom, okay, check mark. Boom, check mark. Okay, I'm going to go do this inventory shit I need to do. And then the day is over, and I got all these checks. I may not have knocked out everything, yeah. but there's a lot of check marks, and I'm like, I knocked out, knocked out a lot more shit if – as opposed to me not having this list. So yeah. that's just how the brain works. My, li- my yeah. list is, uh, uh, it's very thought out, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I have a 75% is a win. 90% is elite. 100% is champion level. That's how I s- separate it. Like I'm 70. So 70 was passing, you know? Well, there's a, there's a, <laughs> that's there's a book that I haven't I'll read. I'll see you do it. Okay. There's a book that I haven't read, but the premise of it, I think it's called the 70% rule. And basically the premise of it is if you do seven out of 10 things, you're doing, you're doing well. Yeah. You know, a lot of people get so bent, up, bent out of shape because you didn't do nine or 10 out of things. See, I hold myself to that standard though. I used to hold myself to a nine or 10 standard Progr- you know? yeah. and Pro- I was miserable. Progress over perfection. Yes. And now 70%, I'm good. I'm happy. And I don't yeah. care, you know? This is what you're getting from me, I've 70%. Learned, well, it's also the only thing that's sustainable. You can't sustain And 100%. I'm very happy about it. You may it. hit 100% yes. one day, maybe two days in a row, but ultimately you're going to fall back to a certain... But there's no reward for hitting 100%, right. you know? Right. Like you there's just need no- to constantly be making progress. Yes. You know, and that's the whole thing, too. And it's... Excuse me. And you need to even allow yourself the opportunity to kind of, like, take a step back from it, too, especially if you're making constant progress every day. I mean, I had a real hard time yesterday. I felt like shit. I woke up. I trained some clients. And I got home, and I was just like, I just laid down. Sometimes laid you get recharge. Next thing you know, Dude, it's 10 a.m., you know, and I'm like, holy fuck. And that's what I did and fucking I'm like, Sunday. I hated it. Yeah. That's, that's where I was at, bro. I was just like, dude, I'm done. We yeah. call that a day in the bed. And Lydia was sitting there working. I'm like, babe, I feel like a piece of shit. She's like, Joe, stop. She said, you are the hardest dude worker I know. Yeah. Like, you've been going every day for weeks on end. You don't get weekends, really. She's right. like, just right. enjoy it. Yeah. And, of course, we eventually came here, and I did a couple hours of stuff, and then had a really light lift. I'm doing kind of a deload week just to let my body recover because I'm just hurting weird. Yeah. And went back, you know, and it was a pretty chill day. And I'm glad I did it. But even in the process of just like laying there in bed, I'd like open my eyes for a minute. I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing with your life, Joe? Yeah. You yeah, that scumbag. Shame <laughs> yeah. creeps up on you and tells you you're yes. shit if you're but not you need doing to do something. That. You have to do that. Even God, I mean, it says in the Bible that we talked about that book you mentioned, you know. And what's that book called? I'm not a big, you know, thumper, but it, I heard, it, even, I hear it's popular it says thumper. on the seventh day he rested. Like even yeah, yeah you know? that's a good point. I mean, <laughs> that's a good point. I mean, God, the creator God was like, God was like God. even God took a day off once a week, you know? That's yeah. why God was like Man, I'm no, taking, I'm a huge a advocate like, <laughs> for taking a day where you don't challenge yourself mentally, spiritually, or physically. Yeah. Well, what I'm doing right now is I, we've been talking about this a lot, and the re- I was supposed to come on Sunday to the event that didn't have a lot of people. Now I feel even worse. I know me. But I, I, I lately I've is been, what it is. We'll yeah. come to the next one, me yeah. and you. Yeah. yeah. Lately, okay. I, lately I've been we'll doing that. I'm, I can't. I really need a break, and I've needed a break. And I, finally, I'm at up the point in my business where I'm kind of at a checkpoint where like I have some relatively low maintenance people, and like I'm kind of good, and uh, but because everything's been going really well, I kind of never really took that break and kind of forgot about it and I've just gotten run down again. And so like I was talking to my girlfriend and for, and I might make it a tradition. We'll see how it goes. But like the last 12 weeks of the year, like October, November, December, I'm working two, three days a week and I'm taking days off. I'm a, I, I I'm, only and, work one and a half days and, a week. To your point, I think the most important thing about it that I've done is uh, really set the boundary of like, if I'm not working on a Wednesday, I'm not gonna it's feel bad okay. about it. I'm not gonna feel bad about it. Yeah. That's where I realized a lot of the shit was coming from. Like you were talking about, is that I would schedule a work day and then I wouldn't work, and then that's where I would feel bad. Yeah, mm. but that's where my husband is. He has a really hard time taking time off. Me too. On if a I, Wednesday afternoon. Right. And I'm like, you have the freedom and flexibility it's, and success yeah. to do that. You're the only one holding yourself. And some prisoner. of us don't have weekends, like yeah. you know. So you have to take like. Yeah. That's why I looked at yesterday. Exactly. Yesterday was my Sunday. Like, who's, yeah. who's going to give you the day off? I mean, you. Yeah. you have to give, He's always on that's, call. That's, that's the point. You have yeah. to give yourself the day off because yeah. nobody else is going to do it. But And that boundary, I think, is really important. To, like, it's it's kind of ironic, but it's like if I schedule the time off, then I wake up and I don't feel the pressure to go because I'm like, today's not a work day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. Now, if you're not making any progress in life and you're just taking yeah, days of off, like. But what were you talking oh. about? Balance? Yeah, balance. balance. Like, yeah. recognize it. Like, you know, earn it. Yeah. As well, you know. Um, God, and there was another I, point I wanted to touch on, and it sucks. Well, if it comes back to you, uh, do it. But I do want to say, um, just because we are pretty deep, I would like you to go back to your story some more. Oh, gosh. Yes. Where, where, what time are we at? Uh, the audio recording is at 118. The, um, yeah. We're over an hour. We're over an hour. Okay. Well, yeah, go back to your story. So, um, 
jail addiction. You know, you told us about a little bit about your childhood um, hairdressing. You know, okay. got addicted, jail. I think you're getting into your husband and kids. Tell us a little bit about that too, and you know, everything kind of since you've had that realization too, as well. So I had the. Um, I, I went to jail because a girl got caught stealing from Dillard's, and she became an informant. And she, uh, we had an interaction three times. You know, mm, she was a snitch. Mm-hmm. Um. Anywho, She's like, well, I wasn't going to call her that, but yeah, well, <laughs> just a fucking rat. It is <laughs> truth. <laughs> you know what happens. Um. Anywho, it is what it is. It had to happen. I had to get the charges or whatever. At the time, you're probably pissed, but you're. Oh yeah, it was it, the beginning of the end for but me. But it was necessary. You know, I started trying to pull it together. It just was. It's real hard to get off those pills. Those drugs are. Fuck yeah. You know, shit. From a health perspective, um, yeah. Not even the legal side, just the health side. It's difficult. But I never asked for help. Like I never went to anyone and said, "Hey, I've got a problem. I need some help." I just was trying to, you know. And that's why I joined the military because I. It was like, oh well, if I don't. Stop doing pills, yeah. then I'm fucked. Like this, yeah. this, it was like you gave yourself a hard end. Yeah, and if I hadn't, yeah. if I hadn't taken something so like gone to such an extreme measure, yeah, who knows? I'd probably have been still doing shit. Yeah, but I knew the military was not going to yeah. accept that shit. So I just was not able to hold myself accountable ever at all yeah. through anything. Same. Um, and so when I got locked up, I pled out, you know, and I didn't have to do time. I got probation, um, but I never could get clean, so I kept failing drug screens, and then. Had to do some time, you know, I had to do some 30 days here and 30 days here, and I did weekends. And Were you like a boss in there? Oh, gosh. No, they did not. I didn't fit in in jail. Even in jail, they wouldn't let me be cool, you know? They wouldn't. She was like, I came here because I thought. I, made I know. A you know, I just, I felt like a misfit my whole life, and then I went to the, you know. You're like, maybe this will be a. Where all the other misfits Yeah, I don't mean to laugh at it. It's well, just, it's, you know, comical really now. you got to make humor things. Yeah. I just, I could not fit in, you know. I just didn't fit just in a, anywhere. Of here of all places. Yes, and then, and they wouldn't. And I was like, no, I'm like y'all. You know, I really am. I'm I'm one of the She just stabs somebody right in the, in the throat. She's like, look, watch. <laughs> like, how do I prove so, this? Anywho, when I got out, um, I had a condo. My dad had leased it to somebody else who wouldn't let me live there. So I went to live in sober living. That's when I met my husband. I met him the very first night I got out of jail. Um, he was a train wreck. I thought he was going to be a red flag. He's real good looking. He's very attractive. I was attracted to him. I saw him in your pictures. He's a handsome guy. He's a good looking dude. Um, but we, I don't know, we became friends and we just were inseparable. I guess, you know, I'm attracted to energy, like people's. Yeah. I know within 20 seconds if I like you or not. You know what I'm saying? So do you, was it like you knew Instant. right off the bat? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's how it was with Lydia. I yeah. tell people all the time, like, I went on this date with this girl. I'm yeah. Like, well, yeah. That was worth a shot. Yeah. I, obviously, I was extremely attracted to her right off the bat, but yeah. then I got She's to talking attractive. to her, and I was like, holy shit, this is it. Yeah. Like, I knew instantly. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. We've been together ever since. Uh, we had our... And our wedding anniversary was last week, or it was the first week of October. We're not either one of us real sure on the date. We can't remember. The I'm real bad with married? dates. I don't know. Who knows that shit? I don't know. <laughs> Isn't there like a card I just learned his birthday like a couple weeks ago on a marriage certificate. I think it's the 8th or the 9th. Could My be the 10th. The We're not it's probably sure. probably the 9th. Probably the 9th. Probably okay. The 9th. Okay. That's funny. Was that on a Friday like three years ago or two years ago? I can't remember mm, how long we've been married. It was, so on, a, that. It was on a Sunday this year, so it may have been on a Friday. Y'all been ago. married a couple years? Something, something like that. And you, how, did y'all have both your kids together? or? So my son, I mean, my five-year-old son is my son and my husband's son we had together. And then okay. my nine-year-old daughter is my husband's biological child. Okay. Her mother died when she was a baby uh, from addiction. Oh, man. Um, so... But I've had her since she was a small, you know, just like 16 months or something. Yeah. She, I've been her mama for a long time. And you said you have a, have a godson, too? And then we have a 15-year-old godson named Noah. He lives with us, too. He has parents. His oh. parents used to be on drugs, and now they're not on drugs. And he has a good relationship with them, but he lives at our house sometimes, too. Could y'all pretty much raise them? or Just he moved in with us when he was like 10, mm -hmm. and then... He homeschools and stuff, so he has freedom to come and go. And I'm being he goes to our house I'm and doing his parents' so you, house. That's an interesting, interesting dynamic. Yeah, with him. Who gave? Uh, you know. You enjoy it? How do you like being a mom? Whoa. Um, 
Uh, she damn near forgot she had kids earlier. I damn near forgot. <laughs> Their kids are assholes, you know. They just really are. They're just little versions of you. And so it that was really cha- that's what happened with with me in my self awareness. My moment of self awareness is I I hated everybody. I was looking at my kids like little just. With resentment, you know? Almost, like, almost like, like as if they burden. were burdensome. Yes, yeah, it was yeah. a burden. Because I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. But I knew I wasn't doing it right, you but know? That's a crazy realization because you were, crazy. like, 37 at the time. Th- this was just two years ago, yeah. And, and I had all three of these kids. Um, but, yeah. So, so me and my husband, we do therapy. You know, he goes to therapy. I go to therapy. And we go to therapy together to, to try to figure life out. Really, neither one of us have a clue. Have you progressed much since then, like on the mental aspect and everything? I feel like I am a different person. One thing I had to change um, in order to, like, find myself and my identity was to get rid of, you know, the pride of what other people think. Mm, And get rid of certain people. And get rid of certain people. Like, you you know, a big thing for me that has been – a huge influence on like my growth and you know where I'm at today is the people I surround myself with. Like, are we, are they also trying to do the same thing? <laughs> my and husband, if they're not, if they're sitting still, then it's just kind of like that's that's kind of tugging you a little bit. It's like they got a rope. I am very specific about who I share energy with. Like, yeah. I you have to protect your energy. It's important, of course. you know. And and people are energy vampires. They'll ruin your. Yeah. You know they oh, will. How, I tell, how, how do you keep that? How do you keep that external stuff away, uh, from doing that, sucking your energy out and stuff? I, I don't take up space with people who don't make me feel good, you know? Yeah. So like, you, that's so a you just don't even pay attention to it to begin with? boundary. Like, even people who, I don't even give some people a chance. Because now I've learned, like, I'm real empathic. I absorb the I energy. Agree. Like, it affects yeah. me, yeah. you know, intensely. So you have an intuition about people, I'm the same. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 yeah you ain't, you know. I've definitely been wrong about people before, but... A lot of times, though, it, I think people change too. People can have some awakenings. I've challenged change. some people before. You well, know? I've been wrong about people in the bad way too, though. I mean, I'm like, I thought, like, I was wrong. Like, I thought they were good. Oh yeah, and yeah. Then they weren't bamboozled. Yeah. Oh but, yeah, it's happened. I mean, yeah. you're you're not gonna be 100 percent accurate, but I think I'm big with energy too. But I, I think with that too is like some people are good at faking it, right? And so, and me as a person, I can find somebody right, and they got this one good quality about them, or like I yes, get them to exactly. open up to me a little bit, and exactly. I focus on that. Look and the, then there's all this chaos and all these things about them that are so negative, but I'm just really focused on well, that one good thing. Focusing on and trying to bring out the best, like the best parts of somebody or like the good in somebody who isn't necessarily good, I think it's a beautiful trait to have, but it's, it sets you up to get fucking your head kicked out. And not every time, but a lot of times, yes. And it, it can fuck you. Yeah. I, I think that it's a rare trait to have because most people, you have to be very secure and, and love yourself a lot to be able to see beauty in other people, you know? Like people who can't give compliments or... You can't give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have, you know? Like I see the beauty. I'm very complimentary. Like I compliment people yeah. a lot. And it's not because I'm a people pleaser. It's not. It's because through my compliment to you, I compliment myself, you know? Yeah. and I If d- I see the beauty in you, it's because I see the beauty in me. And I like to acknowledge that. Yeah, exactly. Rather than a lot of people just yeah. self-project negativity. That's I what I was going to say. Is it, every, people say that the things that you're judging people for is reflecting on you anyway, go, but that's good or bad. If you're, yeah. if you're like, wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, you look, oh, th- it's because in your mind, you're that, you're thinking that way. If you're thinking super negatively, I could tear you apart. But you yeah. attract what you put out. Yeah, exactly. I don't attract, too, yeah. people ask me, you know, do I protect my energy? I don't attract funky energy. It never really. gets yeah. to you to begin it with. It just doesn't. No. Yeah. Like I'm, so if it does, you just immediate, big, big cut off right at the head. Oh gosh. Yeah. I mean, I, I have, I, like I mean, that. even, even people that I do spend time with have, you know, gotten, um, gosh, I was doing this guy's hair one time and he kind of got off on a tangent and he was triggering some shit and it was, it, it just, I wasn't, you know, he was making me feel some type of way. Yeah. I just put my stuff down, turned around, walked off. I didn't yeah. say anything. I just <laughs> immediately, I just walked out of the room. Yeah. You know, and he'll get the hint. I didn't even have to say anything. By the time I come back in, he forgot we've moved on and it's over with. But I don't give. That was. I think that's awesome though. She's just straight up like this hard energy, this energy is like I don't like the way I negatively. feel. I'm walking out of the room. Exactly. And I have the power. I, like I don't like the way you make me feel. I've got the, I have the power to leave, to walk away. In, now we'll in say all like things. That. Yeah. And I will say I've had to learn too. Sometimes people are venting and it seems it is negative energy, right? But I've learned, too, that, like, you know, 
usually I'd be like, fuck, man, this is like draining. Like they're venting to me and it's just so negative and it's like I can feel it. But usually if you just listen and you give it a little time and they, they vent, they vent, they vent, the conversation, if you're just willing to listen to them, it'll change. Yeah. And then it'll get more positive and then yeah. you start like really connecting. So I've had to learn how to just allow people to vent sometimes too. Oh, for sure. And like just – get this negative shit out. That way the conversation can morph into something positive. Now, if you're just coming to me and like you're a con- the conversation is always negative. You can't talk to me about it two times. Yeah, exactly. Because that's I've had good, people that rule. I've known for like years, <laughs> for years on, it's like the same conversation as three years ago. And You've it's like, me. dude, I understand shit sucks, but it's the same shit that sucked three years ago. Like mm. you can change this. Mm-hmm. Like now it's like, it's obviously under your control yet. You've made no move yeah. to change it at all. You're complaining about the exact same things. And this is the time to look in the mirror. Yeah. So do you have that rule about stuff? That's even like valid negative things. You talk about it once, get it out and then don't bring it back up. Oh gosh. Like something that like legitimately, you know, is upsetting or not, not like. I don't like to repeat myself. It's a pet peeve. It makes me feel a disconnect between me and the person. Um, so if it's someone who's like harping or complaining, I heard you, I hear you, I validate your feelings, I'm going to accept and, and then I may even give you a piece of advice, unsolicited or solicited, you yeah. know, I'll, I'll give you some feedback. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm not attached to it. I have separation like, I can just separate myself from stuff because i, I got to protect my energy, right? Yeah. Um, do you have that rule for yourself, though, too? Like, if you have something that's bothering you, do you try to, like, get it out once and then not come back to it? Do you think that's a good strategy? Because I think it could, like, I think it could be, like, you express yes, it. Yes, but I trust myself, too. So, like, I, like, if I say. You need to come back to you feel like you trust yourself to mm-hmm. do so. Yeah. Like, I'm real intuitive, highly intuitive. Yeah. I trust my gut. Like, I, I, I feel like. Yeah. You know, I let the universe speak to me. I look for the signs. I follow the signs. I feel well guided, highly favored, whatever. Yeah, I like that. The okay. energy is important. Yeah, you got to feel those things and recognize them. I try to do everything with intention. You know, mm-hmm. whatever course. I give thoughts to. Yes, I try to do it with intention, and sometimes I try to intentionally. Not think of anything, right? Which is really hard. It is yeah, really that, hard. That's the yeah. biggest thing. That's the biggest thing I try daily to like. I've even recently pictured it as like a sword, like that I'm just sheathing. Like I don't need to think right now. Let's just put this away, and just live. Yeah, you know that's what yeah. a lot of people struggle with, like meditation and stuff. They like think that's what you're supposed to do. Like not you're not think. supposed to thinking about anything. You can't. That's and impossible. I'm like, that's impossible. Yeah. Recognize yeah. these things. Or me. Think about the things that are sent to your mind in that moment. Like or, the driving. Yeah. And like, so the way I visualize it too, a lot of times is like, if it's just not worth thinking about, like, I just like, it's like a cloud. It's like, oh, there it is. But then there's things that I want to focus on. Like maybe there's something within myself that I'm struggling in with, you know, uh, you know, years ago, like maybe it was a struggle with porn, right? Like, yeah. you know, because a lot of men struggle with that. Right. And like, I would think about that and it'd come to me and I'd be like, all right, let's focus on this. This is obviously a pretty terrible thing. It's fucking you up. You know, it is like focus on this. Or I'd think about some other negative aspect of my life. And I'd kind of like bring these things together. And like, honestly, sometimes meditation could be exhausting to me because I'm like sitting here with my thoughts and these things that I don't like about myself fucking have my have my own therapy with it like i hate that you know like how do we fix this and just recognizing these things and try it's to be better be the done, next though. day yeah it's got to be done it's got to be done rarely have i ever gone thoughtless like yeah. there's a couple times i've somehow made it happen and it's just like it's a pretty crazy feeling but that's that's not the point of meditation i think that's unconsciousness you know when yeah. you're you're asleep like that's when i i mean i think there's a moment when i'm asleep when i don't have thoughts i don't have dreams i'm not a dreamer can y'all is that hard for y'all to believe no, I like, rarely have dreams, and if I do, it's just like something random as shit. It's like I silly. mean, they say they say you just don't remember them. I just don't remember. That's them. what yeah. they say. Everybody dreams, yeah. but you just don't remember them. But, I don't remember my dreams. Um, but I used to. There was a time in my life where I had very vivid. You said you had a very I have vivid. Very vivid. Yeah, I, I have had very and vivid. nine out of ten. I would nine and a half, nine point nine out of ten of them are nightmares. So they're like very vivid nightmares. Like I'll, I'll have, have a dream, like I'm walking out of the mall, and like walk up to my car. There's like a murdered body in my car. Like, I have shit like that. Like I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Maybe like, it's a vision like of the future. My, my son, my five-year-old, he sleeps and he's scared of the dark. But it's because and he I've has always, a very vivid. I've always he's had very bad creative. I, used, I had uh, night terrors when I was growing up. Do you know what that is? Mm-hmm. My sister used to have those. Bro, just wake up screaming. 
just wake up screaming in the middle of the night. That's rough. I cherish like, sleep so, I'm telling so, you, so, like, so, so, so much. Yeah, same. And I also have recurring nightmares. So I have the same nightmare over I used over to again. do that. So recurring, horribly vivid nightmares. Not good. That's rough. But uh, what I was going to say, though, uh, about the not thinking thing is um, I just kind of, like, I think that you could relate to this pretty heavily, too, and obviously Joe, but um, because it just never stops, to me, like, not thinking is just when my mind is calm. Like, if I'm just, like, if, I, if I'm, like, walking my dog and I'm just, like, in awareness, we're talking about meditation, right? So I'm just, like, in awareness. I'm just, like, yeah. hearing what's the birds chirping and I'm just feeling the sun and I'm not, th- to me, that's not thinking. Like, I'm, like, just living. That All, dissociation we talked about, like, when you're zoned out. Yeah. Yeah. But to me, that's, like, a, I don't know, like, when I can move freely without having to actively think, that's, there's always thoughts going on, but, like, Whenever I talk about, like, sheathing it, my point is, like, like, let's say you're really curious about something. Like, this is an issue for me, and this is what I was talking about. Again, this is kind of my therapy. I ask questions sometimes that I'm just curious about. (laughs) But not letting it in, right? I'm such a curious person. Even with negative stuff, it's like I want to get into this and figure it out and figure out what this person said and why they said it and all this stuff. And um, a lot of times I don't need to. Like, I just don't need to be. There's certain things I can be curious about, and there's certain things that are valuable to learn more things about, and there's some things that just aren't. And there's some things that aren't in my control that no thinking can, no thinking can bring me to a place of peace with. So like, whenever I'm at my best mentally, I would say is whenever I can, all that shit's not there. Yeah. And I'm just like, walk, like I'm just living and not caught in thought. I'm I'm still having thoughts, but a lot. Like I live a lot of my life caught in thought. Yeah. And so like it's like a reprieve for me whenever I can just yeah go five minutes and it's like oh I didn't even think about anything and then of course I think. Oh, I didn't think about anything. Yeah. Why, why is that? I wonder. And then yeah. it goes. Off to the races again. But that, that's what I mean about it. I'm trying to more actively say, okay, let's just put this away for now. In the identity crisis, I, I stripped away all the things that made me who I was. I quit my job. I or that you thought made to, you who you yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't, like, lose my husband or give up my kids or anything like that. I just, like, changed all the things that I could change. I started working yeah. out and going to the gym and doing all the things that I thought I was supposed to do to get my head fixed you know i mean got a therapist all that stuff did all that stuff and i've talked about this before like fitness is life-changing life when you changing. start taking it serious like fitness is just the guide the, like the one stepping it's stone because so everybody's beneficial. capable of it for my mental health it's easy to get a gym, gym memberships are cheap or she's easy just to get on youtube and learn shit that you can do at home yeah but it's just stepping stone that like bleeds into the rest of your life if you st- I'm telling you, if you're in a bad place in life and everything fucking sucks, Dude, and start I'm working out. Deficient, yeah, and that's what I didn't know. Like working out, releases that's the all best. that. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, that's the best. Like, like the runner's high. That's what. That's it is. literally yeah. the only reason I do it. I hate the gym. I'll look you dead in your face and tell you I don't like coming here. I hate it. <laughs> I only do it for the chemical reaction. Yeah, but you I've, know? I've learned to do that too. Like the sauna. By the way, we were talking about the sauna. It it mimics a moderate cardio workout, so it releases all that stuff. And so yeah. sometimes I'll just be in a bad mood. And I'm just like, I'm just going to sit in the sauna because I know that it's going to release a bunch of chemicals and make yeah. me feel better. Yeah. I mean, just knowledge of having that. You know? That's one thing that, that I learned when I started finding out who I was. I stripped away all the things. Like, I, I took all the decorations out of my house. And, like, I didn't want to be trendy. I, I wore a uniform. I wore black pants and a crop top every single day just because I liked it and it made me happy and nobody fashion influenced yeah. me. Like I just picked some things that I liked and started doing some things that I, I got crop tops. So, okay. <laughs> um, turns out other people like it and here I am an influencer. Now it's so You're weird to even say that. Um, yeah. Anywho, but, um, oh gosh, there was a, I lost a thought somewhere. That's okay. Well, I, we were talking about, um, Oh, oh, it was important. Damn it. You were talking about where you're at now. Like, you know, you're talking about how you stripped away all the things and <laughs> and you got into fitness and like we were talking yeah, about we how fitness, fitness was a stepping and, stone. And then we talked about how we weren't talking about TikTok yet or how you got into that. Oh, God. Ah, uh, it's okay. Oh, God. It's really okay. Maybe it'll come back by the end. Maybe. Well, what Joe, what Joe was saying is that I, that I think is important to note too is that he was saying that you're kind of, like you said a minute ago, that you kind of feel like even over the last year, you've still been a little slow. I think that's cool that you... Like while you're going through it, you're like, "Hey, then." Oh God, you got to learn to laugh at yourself yeah. too. Like I'm, I'm not as smart as I thought. I, I make a lot of mistakes, but I've learned other people make mistakes too, right. and no one holds me accountable to the. No one holds me to the standard that I that you hold yourself held to. myself. Yep. Yes, yep. and so it's just easy to just I. Did that whole t- y'all like other people like my TikTok, but that's for me. Like, yeah, that 
it brings me so much joy because I make mistakes all the time. Like it's just and you share it and I share it and I I laugh at myself. Like I I'll get to like low key wheezing, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> at your own stuff. Yeah, at my myself. <laughs> yeah, that's egotistical as fuck. No, Don't put that in there. That, <laughs> edit that out. How did so? T- I laugh at shit I do too though. Like I was laughing at the one I was recording and I kept like jacking it up. Yeah. And it was a real, and I just, I mean, same thing. I a just toxic my- trade. I think I'm the funniest <laughs> person I know. So you took all the stuff out of your house. You cha- you took all the stuff that you thought were, was like a label to you. and then. Oh, what? yeah. I like collected stuff from yard sales. My house looks like an episode of Seinfeld and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air had a baby. Mm. It's like. I, I don't think I've ever. It looks like that. we had money in 1993. <laughs> It does. Yeah, like, it's right. real fancy for, like, 1993. Yeah, like, you step in there 20 years yes, ago. Yes, people come over, but but it's real homey. Like you love people it? People come in. I love it. People also, other people love it. They're like, I love it here. I have tons of plants. I have, like, 100 plants. Nice. I have lots of plants. Mm. Yeah. But I like it. It makes me happy. And I just started doing things that make me happy. Because no one, you know, if you don't do the things that make you happy. Then what's the point? No one's going to do them for you, you know? That is a fact. Yeah, and I don't do a lot of things. You said, "Do I do I give a lot of stuff energy?" I don't. I don't do things I don't want to do. You yeah. know? Why should you? I mean, like somebody's asked me to be on a podcast before, but I didn't want to. Well, look at that. What made you want to be on here? Oh gosh, I don't know. Because I like energy. You know, you have good energy. We have good energy. Our yeah. energies vibe together. True, Logan. I didn't know you were going to be cool, <laughs> but I'm. Yeah, you well, know. I hope I passed the test. You passed the test. Well, I'm the same as you, though, energy wise, right? Energy. Like, if if Logan same. and I, like, if he was just this, maybe a person that was just uncomfortable to be around, like, this is like a big part of my job now, the podcast. So, if he was someone that was uncomfortable to be around, I'd be like, I he probably it probably wouldn't be Logan. But Logan's got great energy, and yeah. he's great to have around, and we have great conversation. He brings up great points to guests, so it's like it works well. It's a yeah. perfect storm. So. Love you, dude. Appreciate it. I'd learn to let people be who they are. Mm-hmm. Let people be people. And then you decide who you want your people to be. Yeah, they can still that's be great, who they want to be. You just yeah, they just don't have to be. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to have people point. in your yeah. life. Yeah. I'm an acquire Tay, so point. I get to acquire all the people who. I like that. I like know, that a lot. Like just. Season them, my bowl. <laughs> even even people that are flying off the. Off the oh gosh, sorry. Off the handle. It's like, let them do that and then. Is that somebody you want to know? Cool. Yeah. Well, like, how often does he do that? If, yeah. any, you know? if anything, but if anything, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, it's like a mafia story, but like how somebody, you know, I gave this guy 200 bucks and he, he ran away with it. I haven't seen him since then. Like, what do I do about it? It's like asking the mafia boss. And he's like, sounds like you got off pretty cheap. You only paid $200 and that guy's not in your life anymore. Yeah. Huh. I think that's fucking. Good. That's perspective. I think that's awesome. Well yeah. 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 I like that. Perspective. Um, so, okay. We're running short on time. So tell us real quick before we roll out, because um, we're going to be doing this again. Talked about growing up, addiction, jail, you know, hairstyle of kids, marriage, da da da, all the stuff. And we can always reiterate these things down the road. Um, so obviously, everybody knows your hairstylist. You're an influencer on TikTok. Like, what kind of doors is that open for you? You know, like just a lot of people. I because I've been pretty ignorant to whole the TikTok world until just recently. And now I'm like, all right, this is a pretty valuable tool. Um, It it can be. um, Like I know a lot of influencers make a lot of money on TikTok. You know, they work with brands and promote stuff. I've worked with a couple brands that I already use. You know what I'm saying? Of course. I only promote stuff that I use because if otherwise it's not in. authentic, you yeah, know, like that's what, that's my niche. People always say, what's your niche on TikTok? Authenticity. Of course. Just. Uh, that's mine too. I yep. love it. Okay. Same. Authenticity. That's my niche. Um, I, I, it's for fun. It's creative. He talked about his journal entries. It's my journal entry. Yeah. It's my art every day. It's my self-expression. It's my. It's a journal entry. It's what it is. Well, and obviously people love to see you share that. You got a pretty massive following, correct? Like, oh gosh, what is it? I don't know. He may know. I don't know. Five hundred and thirty thousand. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. Very yeah. Nice. Who knew? I mean, that's crazy. That's a that's a lot of fucking people. I, okay, so here's, I have like seven point three million likes, and what that is is seven point three million times someone <laughs> yeah. has said. I accept you for who you are, you yeah, know? Yeah, Like, it just feels, it's, yeah, and, awesome. and words of affirmation are my love language, and people leave comments, like, 
People don't leave hateful comments. People always ask me if I get hate comments. I don't. Yeah. Or maybe I do, but the universe doesn't put them in my feed. I don't see them. I don't know about them. You know. Yeah. yeah, we've we've gotten some negative stuff. I mean, you know, I've I've gotten negative comments based on like their religious, the spiritual stuff. You know, people are like, oh, we're gonna go to hell. It's I mean, usually everybody's on, like, got an opinion. I don't. You know. You, you know. I saw. I honestly. I honestly. Thanks for show, thanks for watching. Yeah. Man, yeah, like well, you saw it regardless. You just so. increase the engagement. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, dude. <laughs> Keep telling me I'm going to hell yeah. on every post. It helps. Um, but you know, you get that. And, but most of the time it is pretty positive feedback, you know, yeah. and I appreciate that. And like, it's, it's now that I'm on there and engaging with people more cause TikTok is heavy on that. You don't yeah. get that really on YouTube as much as you do on TikTok. And it's like I was talking about earlier, just sharing my, my rec anniversary and having yeah. people, you know, I think like 30 people commented on it, which is pretty cool. And yeah. I just, it was a relatable thing. And I'm like, yeah. man, these people really like interact and they understand they're, they're going through it now or they have been. And, and it's just, it is really cool to see that. Yeah. So, so for people that don't know, what kind of things do you post? Um, and also is TikTok the only place you're on? I'm on Instagram, but it's just TikTok. I mean, Instagram, there's not, don't follow me on Instagram. <laughs> follow me on TikTok. Um, you could post the same things on everything. I do sometimes, but just tic- my, my stuff is, is my stuff is TikTok. Yeah. My content is TikTok. My Content is not Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't, I mean, the the post I made about having a, a trainer and a chiropractor or whatever, um, gosh, I got like 12,000 views on TikTok, posted on Instagram, I got 79. You well, see? I, this is my game, yeah. and I could get into this with you for quite a while about the platforms and why they yeah. they do what they do, so we'll talk after. Okay. All right. Well, we're running, we're out of time. We're out of time. I'll be back. Miss Chance Cole will be back. Thank you so much for coming Thank on. Thank you for having me. Great conversation. Thank you to everybody who listened to us jump literally all over the fucking place. <laughs> for but I, I love it so much. And I love both you guys. And it, it meant a lot to have you both here. Um, but yeah, everybody, please check out Chance on TikTok for sure. She is. All Styles Chance Cole. Yes, she is the woman. Uh, obviously, check out Cinema 83 LLC on Instagram. Relentless underscore pursuit. On Instagram, relentless pursuit, unders- relentless pursuit underscore HQ on Instagram. That's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. And you know, check us out on TikTok. All the things. Thanks for showing support. Please leave go review, leave review, leave yeah. review. Yep. Yep. Leave reviews. Share. Subscribe. All the stuff. Show us some support. Give us some feedback. We would love that. And if you want to sponsor the show, yes. And if you want to sponsor the show, we are running a campaign on that. So reach out, uh, DM, email. Um, check out the link tree. There's a lot of ways to get in touch with us. And yeah, we'll get your business out there and help support. So thank well, you very much. A lot of ways to sponsor too. You got clips, you got mid read, lead read, See, all the it, different yeah, things. I'm leaving stuff out. Thanks, Logan. That's <laughs> right. He's right. There's all those things. So check it out. Give us a shout. See y'all later. See you soon.